The following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to the second episode of the Bayou Bengal Bites. I'm your host, Chet. I've got Tyler on the line, and hopefully the audio is better. We apologize for the first episode. Still working out some kinks, uh, but we're back for a second week. We got the baseball team doing great, Tigers in the draft, uh, some transfer portal news, and just all things LSU sports. Tyler, how you doing? Doing good. Yeah, it's great to be back too we got a lot of good feedback uh, from episode one so happy to keep it rolling exactly exactly so let's go ahead and hop right into our first topic. so the draft was last week um not a huge showing for lsu this year there weren't a lot of uh draft eligible prospects uh no one actually taken in the first round for the first time i think since 2017 uh but the only one that was really could have had a shot was B.J. Ojolari, who ended up going in the second round to Arizona, which I think is a great fit. He's going to be replacing J.J. Watt. And I've kind of got the list here. I'll just go down the line. We've got uh, Anthony Bradford, who was drafted in the fourth round in Seattle Seahawks. How do you feel about that pick, Tyler? Yeah, I think that's a great fit. Uh, they get to go with uh, another keep stacking on an offensive lineman. Uh, they already have uh, – a couple offensive linemen, uh, D. Lou out there, Damian Lewis. Uh, he was at 2018 National Championship game, and I'm pretty sure they also have another one. Will Clapp is on there as well. Uh, so it's looking like the Tigers are on the offensive front. Uh, so that's a perfect fit. I think that's a great fit as well. We saw Anthony Bradford. He's a versatile offensive lineman. We saw him play not only right guard and left tackle during his career. Congratulations to all these guys. Yeah, so – Next one, we got Jay Ward drafted in the fourth round to the Minnesota Vikings, which I think is a great pick considering uh, they, they lost Patrick Peterson, who signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the offseason. You take one LSU guy, you replace him with the next one. Jay Ward had a great career at LSU. Um, I think uh, I think he had one more year eligibility. I would I, A lot of these guys I would have liked to see back, but I think they just wanted to test their luck. And, hey, fourth round picks, nothing to, uh, to blow your nose in. After that, you got uh, – Jacqueline Roy, also to the Minnesota Vikings, um, a good in the fifth round, uh, six picks after Jay Ward, so he joins his teammate over there. And the biggest kind of, I think, bust from an LSU standpoint was Kayshawn Booty going in the sixth round to the New England Patriots. What are your thoughts on that? And you think he's a good fit in New England? I think that's honestly, if you had to pick any team that Booty would go to, it's the New England Patriots. A guy like Bill Belichick. Heck, he's not going to take any crap anymore of what Kayshawn Booty does. I mean, there was uh, some issues, you know, maybe it was off the field issues, field issues relationship with Brian Kelly. We'll never know the true statement, uh, but what we do know is we saw Booty during his freshman season. He was one of the best college receivers, and he he was able to continue that momentum into his sophomore season. And he got that ankle injury that he suffered against Kentucky wiped away uh, from that season he coming into this season he was a first team all-american a unanimous pick by the ap poll voters as well but it was just not the season for him you know i don't know if it was the quarterback change uh, between max johnson to jane daniels maybe that had something to do with it or maybe it was just the entire coach staff overhauled you know no more coach we saw brian kelly bring in a couple of key guys you know it was pretty much a new staff as well and you know booty really overmatched you know we saw malik neighbors step up in big times. He was a wide receiver one for the Tigers. DeRay Jenkins stepped up as well. You had Mason Taylor, their freshman tight end up. So there are some flashes uh, of booty. I mean, this could potentially be one of the steals in the draft. I mean, he's a top 10 talent 
any given day. It's just the really we saw him struggle both at the pro day and also the NFL scouting combine, his 40 yard dash. He was like, Oh, I'm gonna run a four four. Well, he ran like a four six, four five, yeah, six was pretty slow official time. Uh, so interested to see how Booty does in a system like the Patriots. You know, Mac Jones is there. There's some issues on him and whether Bill Belichick has some trust in him. And then the receivers, I mean, Schuster much is going to be a wide receiver one. But after that, Booty is really going to be set up on the depth chart. Yeah, I think going to a place like that with some of the questionable off-the-field issues is probably perfect for him because Bill Belichick runs a no-nonsense team. Um, and Do your if job. Any, exactly. If, if any, you know, like we said, he was a top-ten talent. Didn't perform well in pro day or at the combine, but the, st- the tape speaks for itself. So we'll just have to see how he develops. I-, I have high hopes for him there in New England. And the last Tiger drafted in the draft, uh, which Jarek Bernard Converse, which I believe he was from Oklahoma State, was a transfer last year. Um, he was taken to New York Jets. So I bet you he's hoping to uh, get a Super Bowl ring with Aaron Rodgers there in, in New York. Uh, but we had some other undrafted free agents a good bit. Uh, one of them that stuck out of me was Ali Gay. Uh, who was just a dog at LSU. And the Texans picked him up uh, on the free agent market. I think that is going to be a steal, especially with them drafting Will Anderson on draft night. You got the two of the more dominant players in the SEC last year on the same team, on the same defensive front. That's, I think that's going to be a, a huge steal for them. Any uh, free agent signings that stuck out to you, Tyler? Yeah, I like Jare Jenkins to the Jacksonville Jaguars. I feel like Jenkins throughout his collegiate career, he was just overshadowed by guys in front of them. You know, neighbors got all the high, but Jenkins, I feel like, was a consistent touchdown score. You know, he last year's tape, you know, it feels like every time that he played Florida, he had at least two touchdowns. He had a big game against the Gators. So I think that Jenkins Florida. is going to be one of those guys, you know, he's going to a Jacksonville Jaguars team. I know that Calvin Ridley – He's probably going to be the star wide receiver there. They have some young talent there. You know, our guy Tim Jones is over there yep, uh, yep. on the scouting team. Uh, so I think that Jare Jenkins, if he has a successful training camp as well, along with a, a really good show and in the preseason, I think that he could be either the wide receiver three or the wide receiver four on this Jaguars team with a very young talent as well. He's definitely got a good quarterback throwing him the ball. So Let's talk to another team that was overshadowing this week. It would be the LSU Tigers over Alabama. So the Tigers got the back-to-back sweep uh, this weekend with uh, taking down out the Crimson Tide as they visited Alex Box. Um, it was it was a blowout for the majority of Friday's game until they came back in the ninth inning. We just couldn't get the last out. But Paul Skeens had a okay outing, nine strikeouts, six innings. His pitch count got up there, so they they didn't let him pitch very long. Um, Saturday was some concern with Ty Floyd uh, being pulled, I think, after three innings. Completely 180 from what we saw last week. And then on Sunday, Christian Little also just couldn't make it through the game. And uh, Saturday and Sunday games were close, but nonetheless, the offense bailed them out. Dylan Cruz, Tommy White were hitting nukes. Bear Jones, I mean, call him Ken Griffey Jr. up there, but the swing is silk as butter or smooth as butter. Sorry, it was just an offensive explosion, uh, which is what the Tigers needed when we our pitching was really a down weekend. What did you see out of the bullpen, Tyler? They really saved us for, uh, Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, the bullpen uh, had their moments at, at times, especially the Friday night game. Uh, you know, I, as Lynn Rollins said, LSU fans need to have some blood pressure medicine on standby when watching all these games, especially the back end of the bullpen comes on. But like you said, Friday night, we saw Paul Skeens uh, only giving up one run, nine strikeouts. That ends his streak of double-digit strikeouts, but I'm sure that he'll come back against Auburn and do the same thing. But we saw Griffin Heron. He really pitched over 70 pitches. I thought that he was going to finish the game, but he had some trouble there. Gave up a couple of runs and let Alabama get back into it. Uh, other than the bullpen was phenomenal this weekend. You know, in the last week's episode, we were to praising Ty Floyd and praising Christian Little. But Christian Little, man, it's just like the command is just inconsistent. The same for Ty Floyd. I'll speak on Christian Little. He had more balls and strikes thrown, and that is just not the recipe, especially like an Alabama team that was in total offense. And I got to give credit to Alabama. This was not an easy sweep. I know it's a sweep on paper, but it didn't feel like a sweep uh, whenever you watch those three games. I feel like the one game that LSU dominated was that Friday night game. But if you go to Saturday and Sunday, LSU had to crawl their way back. Alabama got 
that five run lead. Then we saw this LSU offense, you know, Dylan Cruz uh, hit a three run home run uh, to get him back. And then Hayden Travinsky, once again, the hero. Of- yes. He's the Hayden, hero this week. And again, he's just getting at bats after at bats after at bats. Uh, but I think the, Really, the unsung hero this season has been Alex Malazzo. His offense has been what this LSU lineup needs. You know, you know, you have dudes at the front. You got Trey Morgan, you got Dylan Cruz, and you got Tommy White in that two, three, four. Then in the middle of the lineup, you got guys like who's con- hitting consistently. You got K Beloso, Jared Jones. He can hit a 500 foot bomb on any given day. And then at the bottom of the lineup, you have guys like Thompson who's been there before. And then you also have Alex Malazzo to run. He's been the nine spot as well. So this LSU offense just continues to rake. Uh, Alabama's pitching. I did have concerns for them. They really could not throw any strikes against uh, these Tigers. So we got to get to LSU for sweeping. But if there's going to be anything that holds this team back uh, winning the championship, it's going to be that, uh, you know, the Saturday and Sunday rolls. And then also the bullpen has been shaky as well. But I feel like the bullpen, we saw Riley Cooper uh, come in on Sunday's game. I know he gave up that two-run bomb, but outside of that, he really got a good strike out there. It was the bases loaded. Alabama was threatening to come back, but he really slammed the door on that. So I got to tip my cap to Riley Cooper this weekend as well. Yeah, he was a big, big help out of the bullpen. Javon Coleman on Saturday was huge. Yeah. Of course, he's still on a pitch count, but as we see the the – the season progressed a little closer to the postseason. I think that pitch count will get higher and higher. You just don't want to rush him back from injury. Of course, from the offensive standpoint, Dylan Cruz does what Dylan Cruz does. I think he's not quite back up at 500, but he's getting close. Um, he's now, I think, fourth overall in total LSU home runs, and it's only his third year as a Tiger, uh, which is just uh, absurd. we got Paxton Klingback, who played a little bit on – I think he started Sunday, uh, hit a home run. Uh, so that that's great to see. And, you know, it's kind of a lull of a season. They're trying to get done with finals and school. So I think as soon as they get out of school, the guys are going to be well rested and we're just going to hit these last couple weeks hard. So let's get to next week's game. So we got the Auburn Tigers. We are traveling to Auburn this week. Uh, Friday, Saturday, Sunday series, Fridays at six o'clock, Saturdays at eight o'clock. Haven't had a late game, uh, in a while. And then Sunday, I believe is at one o'clock. Uh, Auburn just got off the series win against South Carolina, taking the first two games and dropping game three by one. They beat Mississippi state, uh, two out of three games. They got beat. They lost the series to Bama. Uh, just looking through some of their, their, uh, records <laughs> they won the series against Georgia, but Sunday they got beat 24 to 7, which is uh, not great. But they lost here to Southeastern Louisiana. I think they're 9 and 12 in SEC play. So that's, uh, you know, it's it spells trap game. It's a low ranked team. Uh, but I think obviously Paul Skeen's going to go out there and dominate Friday night. It's just Saturday and Sunday pitchers are the big question mark. So, Tyler, I mean, how do you, how do you see our Tigers faring against the, we'll call them the War Eagles? Yeah, I think that this Auburn team is starting to play hot at the right time. They're playing like they have something on the line, you know, with a record of 9-12. and 12. The really consensus has been throughout the postseason play, you got to get to at least 14, 15 wins if you want to make it uh, to tournament play. And Auburn, uh, they have this one guy called Cooper McMurray. He has just been hitting bombs after bombs. He hit like seven in the past two series uh, last weekend against Mississippi State. This weekend on the road against South Carolina, a really good South Carolina team if you go on the road like that. So this is really not a team uh, to overlook. I know that the pitching isn't good. They are second uh, to dead last. Uh, Mississippi State is dead last, uh, which we'll get to next week's episode when our Tigers face off against Mississippi State. But they have a team ERA of 6.38. Now, if you're wondering how that, that's not very good because LSU – five team era so that's pretty much one worse overall and their offense is about in the middle of the pack and as you see they have a two eight nine uh, batting average as a team uh, so this has the potential of being alabama lsu series part two with uh really dominating pitching on friday and then after that you're pretty much just throwing up a prayer be a first uh, to ten runs wins in game number two and three because i feel like auburn's pitching staff has been good I- Last week, uh, they did show some signs of improvement against a really South Carolina team. But if you look back at their last home series against Mississippi State, Mississippi State, I feel like those games two and game number three, 
both of those teams had to get it to at least 10 runs to win this game. So I don't think I'm not going to predict another series uh, sweep in this one. I do think that Auburn's going to at least win at least, you know, game two or game three. LSU, I don't think, is ever going to lose a Friday night game outside of the South Carolina rainout. Uh, which you know some LSU fans are calling BS on that because that you know, was if, just an anomaly. No, no, whether uh, you know maybe there's no mother nature in that game. Maybe that's a different story. Uh, but I'm going to predict uh, LSU continues uh, to win series. I don't really see this team uh, falling. Uh, maybe they can. I don't really see them falling against Mississippi State. Maybe they can fall against Georgia. But this team has shown that they are just consistent winners. So I'm going to predict a two-one series advantage to the Purple and Gold Tigers. I'm going bold. I'm going third sweep in a row. Sweet. I think we finished the entire season out, all sweeps. I mean, we got Auburn State and Georgia. Georgia, maybe not. You know, last last game of the season, but I'm I'm going I'm going full on sweep this weekend. Uh, I'm not going 14 strikeouts like I did last week with Paul Skeens. I think I over uh, estimated him. I, I think he gets at least 10 again. I think he gets back in the double digits. So um, it's it's gonna be it's gonna be a late night Saturday night game starting at eight o'clock. But uh, besides that, I think it's prime time. The, tig- the real Tigers are going to take down the fake Tigers. Uh, speaking of Tigers, we got some other Tiger news. We got word today that Garrett Nussmeyer, drumroll, is staying, which I didn't even think was a question, but we'll put it on the show as a topic. He declined to enter the transfer portal, uh, which I think everybody pretty much knew based on the spring game. I think he knows when Jay Daniels leaves, he's going to be the bona fide starter. Um, he's really, he sat out, you know, he's waited his chance and I think he's got to get it next year. Tyler, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, I, I think that this news was going to come eventually, especially with the transfer portal, uh, now officially closed. And that means we're going to have no more transfer news uh, on the show anymore. This pretty much expected, uh, you know, Garrett Nussmeyer, he would have left a long time ago if he thought that if he had other plans, you know, he could have just been like, all right, I'm out. I'm going to go to another program, you know, like TCU and go with this, you know, buddy with Jack. She could have gone there, but he decided to stay committed. And that's definitely refreshing to see it because nowadays all these college football players, you feel like, you know, they don't want any competition. They run away from the smoke. Well, Nuss Bus wants the smoke. smoke. He's going to be the dude. He's going to be the future of this LSU program. I feel like he's just a fan favorite, you know, not really – a lot of people uh, like Jane Daniels. They, you, you know, every time that Garrett he runs too much. comes on the field, he, he throws like a 75 yard bomb, and LSU fans are like, oh, please let this guy be the starter. Like, screw Jane Daniels. <laughs> uh, but this calm down, calm down. If Garrett Nussmeyer does have any disadvantages, is that you got to stop throwing interceptions whenever you come on the game. Like that Southern game this past yeah, he year, three was of them, one I of think. the worst. Yeah, he had at least two or three of them. But you do show some flashes, you know, in the bowl game, he had a couple of flashes thrown, you know, that long touchdown pass uh, to Malik Neighbors and the Georgia game, that long touchdown pass to once again, Malik Neighbors. So you kind of get in the trend. Well, he's not going to have Malik Neighbors by the time he gets to the starting role. But I do think that LSU's uh, quarterback uh, class is going to be set up after Jane Daniels. I'm not trying to look ahead, but we are going to be looking ahead since we're talking about Garrett Nussmeyer and his future. But I just don't really think there's going to be any competition with Garrett Nussmeyer. You know, they did bring in Ricky Collins. You know, he's going to have a little project quarterback. You know, we saw his first uh, thrown pass in the spring game via six uh, by another freshman yeah. linebacker. So I think that Garrett Nussmeyer is waiting in the wings and waiting for his time. And once he gets his time, he's going to be a dude. I agree with you there, Tyler. Uh, let's get to our, our fan favorite segment, Around Town News. So my pick this week for the around town news is Mr. Dylan Cruz. He wears number three, but he wears it for a different reason than other people think. He wears it because he's the third time SEC player of the week. An insane stat line. I think he had two home runs this weekend. Uh, came up with the bases loaded multiple times. Worked walks multiple times, which was more impressive to me than if he were to hit a grand slam. Well, I think I would have liked the grand slam. But uh, uh, that mine is... Dylan Cruz being selected to his third SEC player of the week. What's yours, Tyler? Uh, I think I have to agree with you as well. I had him uh, as my dog of the week on Sports Scramble, so I'm just yep. going to piggyback on you and just – I mean, Dylan Cruz is definitely one of the best players uh, to ever step on LSU's campus. I know if you did a top five, he would probably 
definitely be in my top five. Well, other than Joe Burrow, who, Joe Burrow would be in there as well <laughs> for what he did since he's a legend. Uh, but yeah, it's just really bizarre to see this type of caliber player to step on a college campus and to have two of them. You have Paul Skeens, you have Dylan Cruz. Cruz is going to go number one to the Pirates, and Paul Skeens is probably going to go right behind him as well. But just the discipline as well has really impressed me. He's not really swinging at the bad pitches uh, anymore. You look to his freshman year to now, and he has just improved year in and year out. And the expectations were very high. You know, he's the number one pick, and guess what he's batting? Almost 500. It's just insane Yeah, what he's doing. We might as well just put it already. He's going to be the SEC player of the year for back-to-back years. I told, in a row. He might be the player of the year. Yeah, uh, he is going to nationally wise. Yeah, he might be the Golden Spikes uh, winner as well. You know, he got co-SEC honors, which was bullcrap to me. I think that I agree. There's even B two players this once. You know, the Auburn guy did really good, but no one's better than Dylan Cruz and the, the Pirates playing. I think that the uh, Dylan Cruz is going to be walking into a good system, but before that hopefully hoist the national championship trophy in Omaha once it's said and done. That is the plan. So with that wraps up our rundown this week for Bayou Bengal Bites. We appreciate all the support from week one, and let's keep it rolling throughout the season. I love doing it with you, Tyler. And uh, if you're looking for more sports news, you can catch us over at the Sports Scramble podcast that we release weekly. Um, besides that, we hope everyone has a good one. Go Tigers.